Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, ASCE Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs Membership and Marketing. I'm here with Pat Natal, ASCE's Executive Director for the last 12 years. Pat will be retiring from ASCE at the end of 2014, marking one more milestone in a long and varied career within the engineering profession. Before Pat leaves, we wanted to explore his thoughts and what it takes to reach his kind of leadership success. Pat, on behalf of members and staff, thanks for being with us today. Let's go back a little bit, though, in time, if you will. You were a Boy Scout as a child, and later on you served as an assistant district commissioner for the Boy Scouts of America. How did the Boy Scouts impact your leadership development? Uh, I grew up in the, uh, in the city. I grew up in the city of Newark, New Jersey. So a city kid, having the Boy Scouts as an outlet was very valuable. It kept me out of uh, potential trouble. Boy Scouts built the foundation of talking about the importance of trust and uh, being honest and doing the right thing the right way. And a challenge that came along after becoming an Eagle Scout, we lost our Scoutmaster. And a fellow Eagle Scout and myself ran the troop for a year and a half without anybody knowing it. We uh, did it on our own. So taking leadership, it was just uh, take it on and do it. So I think it uh, taught me to take control, do what I needed to do, but also um, learn from others, and that was very valuable. You earned both your bachelor's in civil engineering and a master's degree in engineering management from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. How did attending that institution shape your career as an engineer, and what advice would you give aspiring young engineers about choosing a college or university? I chose, a new, at the time it was called Newark College of Engineering and eventually it turned into New Jersey Institute of Technology. When I went there it was predominantly a commuter school, a small local school in New Jersey that was really ideal for me. It uh, had what I wanted, I wanted engineering. I think the, the key thing on picking a school is uh, having a, field for, a feel for what do you want to do, what are your interests. Uh, where do you want to spend your time? Uh, you know, when you walk on campus, and I saw this with my own kids, you go on campus and some schools just are a natural hit. The campus makes it. In others, it didn't. As your career progressed, you completed the executive management program at Yale University. How important was that additional education in preparing you to lead organizations? Well, I'll go back to choosing the right organization to go to work for. I went to work for Public Service Electric and Gas Company out of college. And when they were interviewing me, I was interviewing them. I was looking for a company that was going to provide additional education and growth for me. That was something they excelled at. They really spent a lot of time. They, uh, paid for my master's, encouraged me for, to mm -hmm. go for a master's, uh, supported my uh, in, involvement in associations, uh, and supported my um, pursuit of a license, which we'll talk about later, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also did advanced education, technical training. I did a lot of technical training. Mm -hmm. So I went for a master's degree, and I started taking programs in the master's program in civil engineering. But since I was working in other areas, I switched to engineering management, which was like an MBA for engineers. Uh, once I completed that, I looked at uh, additional education that would be valuable. Well, the company supported in sending me to the American Management Association four-week program mm -hmm. for growing managers, was what mm -hmm. they were trying to do. And then a wonderful opportunity came along later on for executive managers, they would pick a couple a year to send to executive programs. The, the Yale program? And I got a chance to go to the Yale program, which was phenomenal. Being in the Yale program, I had the opportunity of meeting leaders from other parts of the country. Uh, there was the uh, chief lobbyist for General Motors was there. So I had my first opportunity to deal with a lobbyist mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at that level, which was pretty interesting. I uh, had the opportunity to deal with uh, somebody from uh, the Boeing helicopter division mm -hmm. and from uh, several uh, generals from the, the Army. Mm -hmm. One was at Fort Knox. And it was interesting because I, when I first saw the roster and I saw the uh, military folks being there, I said, gee, I'm going to see some command and control. Hmm, very surprising. It wasn't. They were true leaders and they showed their leadership skills. 
and I learned a lot from my colleagues as well as the instructors at Yale. Well, and speaking of that, you've worked in a number of different organizations throughout your professional life. How did that variety help you grow, and what valuable lessons could you highlight from those different experiences? Interesting. Uh, at PSENG, um, I started out a, as a marketing engineer, so I wasn't doing your typical engineering. I was out doing uh, work with customers and consultants, which became very valuable later in my life to understand customers mm -hmm. or members. Uh, they're, they're very similar of understanding what their needs are and trying to meet those needs. And that was the role of the marketing engineer, dealing with the large uh, commercial and industrial facilities. Uh, moving throughout my career at PSENG, I became a, a manager. And uh, moving into our first manager role um, was a little um, shocking in a lot of ways because you were now managing your peers, a different challenge but also trying out different ways of doing things. Uh, I have always tended to be a set high standards. <laughs> I think you know that. Sure. <laughs> uh, but having to learn how to modify that to be uh, uh, more understanding, um, some pretty good learning experiences. That doesn't mean you lower the standards, but having dialogue with your folks Moving into executive positions at the company caused a much broader look at what was going on. It wasn't mm -hmm. just looking at the operations of your department. It was looking at more corporate view. Yeah. Uh, that corporate look uh, became very valuable to ASC when I got here because I looked at things at a more global look as opposed to just looking at meeting a specific target or, or task. I served on a lot of strategic planning committees for the company and um, looking at how we were going to grow the f company for the future. But then we had some things come along to change the direction. Deregulation is an example. And I was deeply involved in how do we prepare a monopoly to change their mode of operations to go from just doing delivery of energy to now truly competing in the global market. All those opportunities gave me a chance to learn and grow, but also learn the value of the team. That was probably the best experience, is that uh, frequently you know you can do it better yourself, or you think you can do it better yourself, mm -hmm. and when you realize the talent you have on your team and allow them the opportunity to do it, the product is much better. You're an active volunteer in NSPE. I know you're active at the, the state level. You got active at the national level. Um, you became the executive director of NSPE, so then you're on the staff side, and, and, then, and then you moved on to ASCE too. So you had this, uh, after your you know, kind of the corporate utility world, you had this you know, pretty, pretty serious uh, nonprofit sector experienced. Sure. Especially when I transitioned to the non-for-profit side, I understood the motivators on the for-profit side, but also the value side. One of the things, uh, when I served as president of uh, the New Jersey Society, there was a lot of time I was unavailable to the company. And uh, the vice president that I re uh, indirectly reported to, there was an a, uh, area manager between us, uh, was saying, be careful, you need to make sure you remember who pays the check. And I said, I, I understand that. I, I know when to get things done. And my manager was actually on my case a lot during that year about things. But it, the most rewarding point at the end, we went out to lunch right after I stepped down as president. And he said, this was the best investment the company ever made. I said, really, why? He said, you're a better manager today than you ever were before. You don't micromanage people. You don't look over people's shoulders. You can do things remotely. You develop measures to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. So I found that kind of interesting. But the key, key was the company encouraged and supported those kind of activities. And when you do those kind of activities, the volunteer activities, what you're trying in a volunteer role, you can come back and use in a real job. And it works well. It teaches leadership. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very valuable. How to run a meeting, how to motivate 
people that are volunteers. It's a little different than motivating somebody that is on the payroll. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on the importance of licensure and ethics and, and what role can ASCE play in, in this arena? I've always felt that licensure was very critical. Uh, at uh, North College of Engineering, the professors told us, if you're not licensed, you're not a professional. I took that to heart. And I, I wanted to be a professional. That's why I became a civil engineer. So I went through the, the process of becoming licensed. And I think I learned a lot more about the role of engineers in serving the public. And Pat, I know another thing you've, you've focused on as the leader of ASCE is um, the staff itself, leading the staff, mentoring staff, growing staff, and, and developing people, and, and, and where possible, hiring from within the organization. That, that's a, something that's been really important to me. Uh, I believe leadership has two major values. You know, you, a lot of people have a long list of things. I think they fall into two buckets. Mm -hmm. Bucket one is having a vision. Now, with that vision, you need to uh, develop it properly, monitor it, revisit it, change it when, pro when needed, communicate it, and get people on the bus. Mm -hmm. The other thing is growing people. And that's the point you raised, and I believe that is critical. If we're not growing people, we're uh, going backwards. How, we, how do we up our game? We talk about raising the bar in the profession. Well, we need to raise the bar mm -hmm. for ourselves, and, and that's growing people. Now that ASC's assistant, uh, or current Deputy Executive Director, Tom Smith, will be taking your place at the beginning of January, what advice do you have for him to move the profession and ASCE forward even more? One of the concerns that I uh, voiced to him is that he should not try to be me. Hopefully he learned some good things from me. Mm -hmm. He probably learned some bad things from me that he doesn't want to <laughs> no, do. No, I'm not aware and, of any of those, Pat. And that's good. Don't do those. But he needs to be Tom Smith. The board hired him because he's Tom Smith. Mm -hmm. He has the skills, the knowledge, and the attitude to deliver. What he needs to do is um, continue to look at what we're doing, question it. Why? Why are we doing it this way? Just because we did it yesterday or today, that was good for yesterday or today. It may not be what we need for the future. How do we grow, change, modify to meet the, the needs of the next generation? of engineers that we're going to be recruiting. And I know you've also been very interested over the years in the issue of diversity and inclusion. Um, care to comment on that, kind of where we are, where we're going? Is, is the glass half full? How do you look at that? It, it's, it's been a, been a, a, a challenge, challenge most, of my, most of my career. As a, as a, as young, a young engineer, engineer uh, when I when got I to my got first, to my management, first job, management job, uh, I, I tried, to, tried encourage to encourage more, more uh, women, women uh, uh, to come through the come ranks at PSMG. Uh, I, tried uh, I tried to work with, with the Society, Society of Women Engineers, Engineers in New Jersey, Jersey to try to encourage more, more women. women. And, and we, we, we have not we done have a, good not a good job on diversity, diversity and, inclusion. and inclusion. The, the, numbers, the numbers, we're making, we're making progress. progress. Mm -hmm. When I was when in school, was school, it was 1% women. women. We got mm -hmm. up to 22%, 22% and the numbers, numbers dropped again. Dropped again. Mm -hmm. We need to we do need something to do different. different. Yeah. We, we have, have worked, worked, we, ASCE and others, have worked closely with the National Academy on a study. Uh, what, uh, what we're doing, we're doing what's, what's, what's our message? Changing the conversation. Eventually, we came out with the book, change, change, the the book, book, change the conversation. conversation. Because, because we were talking, talking about it in that wrong, wrong manner. manner. We talked about we're math and science, science as, opposed as opposed to what are we what accomplishing? What do we do? How do we make the world a better place? These are better messages to attract the new types of engineers we want, more inclusive. The IMAX, the IMAX movie, movie is going to include, going to include some, some many of those principles. principles. Uh, we have, we have uh, the, the specialty, specialty societies, societies SWE, SWE, the Society of Women, Women Engineers, the National, Engineers, Society, the National Society, Society of Black, Black Engineers, Engineers, SHIP, the, uh, the uh, Society, Society of Hispanic, Hispanic Professional, Professional Engineers, Engineers mm -hmm. are partners, partners to, to help us, help make, us sure make sure we get the we message get the out in the right way to encourage a more inclusive membership in our profession. In our profession. Finally, Pat, um, what are your plans going forward and, and for the future? What are you, you going to be doing? Well, I, I have a couple of uh, volunteer roles at ASCE. Okay. Uh, 
it was interesting when the search committee met uh, the first time uh, they were saying, well, after you leave, and somebody said, well, you're not leaving, you can be a volunteer like us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will serve on the United Engineering Foundation board. In fact, I'm serving as treasurer this year as a, uh, a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of the roles. I will continue my engagement with the IMAX movie. I will not give up until it's delivered. And then um, I am going to uh, spend more time with family and, and friends uh, back in Jersey, uh, be there full time, not drive back and forth to DC, Virginia every week. And I'm going to take a little part-time position with a uh, company in New Jersey. Well, it's a U.S. company, Hatchmont McDonald. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be their uh, vice president of business strategies and working on their uh, business development area. And one of the special uh, things I'll be doing is working with our partners program and working with our young employees to help develop them. So uh, it's some things that will be exciting and keep me engaged. But Part-time. The ASE job is, is uh, probably one of the most rewarding jobs you could have. You, you touch so many people. You, uh, Bill Henry used to have a great line about civil engineers. He said, civil engineers, you, you wake up in the morning know you're deal going to deal with some of the brightest people in the world with their hearts in the right place. Mm -hmm. Gee, I've done that for 12 years, so it's been pretty exciting. Uh, kind of hard to give that up.